everyone. Welcome back to Medicine for These Times. I'm so happy to have my friend Bina here with us today. And Bina is also the designer of my new branding. Hi, Bina. Thanks for being here. Hi. I'm so happy to be here, Beth. I'm so excited to get into it. <laughs> um, so this is the second time we've tried to record this podcast. And you know what? I decided I don't think I should record any episodes during eclipse season. <laughs> Because first it was just crazy, and then we had, uh, you know, technical problems, and then you got sick. So much better, all in divine timing. Yes. So let me tell you about Bina. Bina Altera is the intuitive, dynamic, visual communicator behind the branding studio Bina. An accomplished artist, illustrator, photographer, and designer, Bina created Bina for people who understand the visual identity that reveals their true passion and purpose is essential to their success. So the syllables of her first name inspired the name of the studio. B is a reminder to be in the moment, and na reminder uh, means that his means there is nothing nada in the way of infinite possibilities. Be in the moment, na. Prior to founding Bina, Bina's photo collage illustrations appeared in the New York Times, the Boston Globe Sunday Magazine, the Atlantic Monthly, among other noteworthy publications. She has received numerous awards for editorial art, and she spent over a decade at the School of Visual Art leading emerging technologies. While at SVA, a multidisciplinary art and design school in Manhattan, she earned an MPS in digital photography, taught digital imaging and photography, and created a course in advanced digital printing. She holds a BFA from the Art Institute of Boston. And, like I said, Bina has designed my new branding, which should be out now as this episode publishes. I think we're starting um, one or two episodes before yours, so I'm really excited. And... um, We will get into it, but I want to preface this conversation by saying just this weekend, um, last night, I had to do something for someone on my team and create this this real art. And it was the first time I got to play around with my new branding. And Bina, this was a very exciting moment. I actually felt an internal shift in Mm. my being. And I was like, oh, Mm. this is the alchemy of the new branding. So. That's so great Job to hear. Done. I was like, it was weird. It was a weird feeling where I was like, whoa, I feel like I've become this kind of like stepped into that next level. But we'll get mm-hmm. into it because I want everybody to hear about your process and how much of a psychedelic journey it was in itself mm-hmm. <laughs> and how we got there. But let's hear a little bit about your story. I'm curious, you know, how did you find your unique medicine in the world and what brought you to making branding and visual arts your living? Yeah, um, such a great question. You know, I, my unique medicine, is, it, you know, it's, it's a combination of, um, it's really making art, it's drawing, it's being present, it's being in the moment. And I've, I discovered that at a very early age, my father passed away when I was 12 and I had, um, you know, it was like art was my salvation. And it really like those, you know, days after um, defined the rest of my life. I made creating my um, livelihood and it was very important to me. You know, it was important to me because it gave me hope. It gave me hope for, you know, what my life can look like in the future and who I can be. And, and also, um, you know, I realized how important it was to, to live (laughs) every moment of your life and to take risks. And because you never know, right? Like tomorrow, we can't, you know, we might not wake up tomorrow and, you know, and then that's just life. Right. So, so being in the moment and being um, present. Yeah. So good. Now, I'm curious, you know, you studied um, art in college. You had this this full art career. Uh, and, you know, you also work with medicines, which is how I met you and how I heard about you, which made the, the branding process a lot more interesting. But I'm curious, how did uh, non-ordinary states or psychedelic 
you know, medicines play into your true path? I'm curious, were you, um, you know, already on this path and then did medicines or you'd worked with medicines and became an artist? I'm curious to hear. Yeah, no, I, I came to the medicine um, really like maybe seven years ago, six years ago. And so that happening like later in my life and I and I went there specifically because I was um just dealing with depression and you know I I had read and learned and many books and about you know the psilocybin and the the great uh impact that it has on people and so you know that was something that I decided later in life um <clears throat> but it was really it was the art that, that, you know, when I look at it in retrospect, as, as I'm doing the parallel of doing, making art and design and doing medicine, it's like the path is parallel. It is like, I'm like, oh, I've been doing this all along. And everything kind of became more clear, like my life and my journey and my path and the decisions that I made. And um, in my art, you know, I look back, I'm like, I didn't even, I didn't even know these concepts. And I was creating art about these concepts, you know. And so it's just really like the medicine work has created um, a deeper connection for me and a, a deeper why, like, you know, why do I do this? And um, a deeper purpose. Um, I know, like, that I get to you know, do the medicine, work with people who are also on the same path. And, you know, with my vision and my creativity and my storytelling, um, and, you know, like the, we can go on, we can just talk about the parallels of, you know, the path, the medicine work and art. Um, but it's like, you know, the medicine work is, it's an, you know, it's a journey. It's your interpretation. It's like metaphors. It's, it's like all of that. And you, when you do your integration work, which is so important, you bring all that with you on on the days af in the days after, and so it's just I don't know. It's just to me, it's magic. Magic is so important. Magic is where it all happens. I mean, I think about um, I love um, the one thing I kept in mind when I was making your brand was. I love to keep three words in mind because I just check myself. And your three words were um, sophisticated, uh, professional, and a bit of magic. So I'm like, am I, is there a bit of magic in here? Is it professional? You know, it's like, so those are my little checks along the way. And I felt like the bit of magic was so important with with your branding because the work that you do, yes, you know, it's like, it's it's being an entrepreneur and that in itself is a journey right like that in itself is like <laughs> you know uh that is i have learned so much you know um and, i talk about uh, that a lot i always say um being the entrepreneurial journey is very it's very much like a psychedelic journey and it's deep it's it's it has its ups and downs it's scary at first eventually you write it out and get used to it and then there's these highs and these lows and i always say people that work with medicines can make really good entrepreneurs for that reason yeah yeah and you're battling with those limiting beliefs mm -hmm. and who knows what shit is going to show up today <laughs> yeah yeah Actually, I wanted to ask you about that because you had worked. So for those that don't know, SVA is one of the best art schools, I think, in the country. But definitely in this area, it's one of the, you know, more well-known ones. And it's, you know, after living in New York City for so many years, everybody knows about SVA. But you had this great career, you know, working there and, you know, working for some of these other publications. And then you went on your own, I think, just recently, right, in the last yeah. few years? A year and a half ago. Wow, yeah. And that's, it's funny because I think that's when I first heard about you, which is great for getting word of mouth referrals in your first few months. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, you know, do, do you feel like your spiritual journey or or the medicine journey played a part in going out on your own or was it kind of just like 
fuck it, I'm done and ready to be on my own after all these years? Oh, no. I got a direct message. A direct message. Ooh. And it was very clear. I mean, if I had been, you know, thinking about, well, what's my next move for a couple of years. Um, but it was a... Um, I got a really clear message. And, you know, of course, you never want to make any major life changes <laughs> right? immediately after a journey. However, I had been thinking about it for years, and I, I just, it was like, it was time. I felt it. I felt that, you know, there are a lot of people, a lot of coaches, a lot of, you know, like coming into the this industry, and like it's, it's just, and I want to support that, you know, that, that world. It's like, I want to somehow be a part of that new um, evolution that we're all going through. And so this is how I can do it, you know, like at this moment. I love that because I, I actually talk about this a lot. So many people want to be involved with the psychedelic space and the psychedelic renaissance and, a lot of these people think, oh, I'll just be a facilitator. And I keep saying, I'm like, not. I don't believe that everybody is here to be a facilitator. And yes, there is some aspect of that that sounds so glamorous, even though I personally find it kind of boring sometimes. <laughs> but um, but generally, you know, I keep I keep saying that there's so many other ways to contribute where I've now met, you know, yeah, like psychedelic informed graphic designers and psychedelic informed uh, copywriters and then mm -hmm. even um, marketing people or people like my podcast producer is a medicine woman mm -hmm. and you know and she actually when I first met her she said I only want to work with psychedelic podcasts and I know for a fact she has at least two of us I think maybe even a couple more and I love that you mentioned that too it's like this is your way you can contribute and bring your like it's like bringing your fullest self where maybe it's not necessarily just giving people medicine but it's still like being part of this movement that you believe yeah. in. Yeah. Um, I love that. And I also love that you got the clear message, even though it was intuitively you knew it was time to move on. And this actually happens to a lot of my clients where it's, and even me, the messages came through over and over and over, whether with or without medicine. And it's like, okay, there's something in me that knows that I'm here for something more. And then it's kind of like, the medicine just makes it so much more clear that then you're okay you're able to integrate it and say like now is it time like let's do this i'm curious did you have any you know i know you're you're married did you have any resistance from let's say your husband or anyone around you like oh my god you're crazy this is going to be so hard no we actually we actually moved into this together um which you know it, I have friends who are, who are like, oh, you guys are so lucky. You're both doing this mm -hmm. together. And and yeah, in, in a lot of ways, yes. Um, and I feel like we've always kind of been on this path. You know, we've always been seekers and um, really curious. And so it was it was a, like a no brainer. Like like Rob got an invitation. I just and I was like, oh, I'm gonna you know like that sounds. It there was no doubt in my mind it was all like yes i felt the yes in my body yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, it's the i call it you know people call it the calling but i keep yeah. calling it the pull yeah where it's like there's a pulling of your soul on your path and it's up to us to really feel it and say yes and yeah it's scary as hell to take that leap but you know it's like leap in the net really does appear every time i mean for me, it was a roller coaster for many years with previous mm -hmm. businesses, but, and who knows, you know, like I always say, I never know where this is going to go in the future. Like I think the universe or whatever we might call it, you know, like our soul has this divine plan for us. And, but if we're always just tuning in to like, okay, well, what's lighting me up? What's coming through the intuition? What are the messages I'm getting? Whether it's you know, usually it's mostly intuitive first and then maybe confirmed by the medicine or meditation or other non-ordinary states that people have where it's like, oh, I've known this all along. Yeah. Um, so I, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing all this. And I'm glad you've gone out on your own because <laughs> now that I've worked with you, I'm like, wow, you are going to have no problem getting clients. Mm. Um, 
So let's talk about your process, which this actually is what interested me the most when we had a common friend that um, introduced or gave me your name and I was like, well, because I've, I've tried to hire people to do my branding and kind of graphics and design and it's taken me many, many years now and I haven't really found the right person. I mean, I found maybe like one person made me some good graphics, but it wasn't going to the point where I really needed it to go. And you took me on this really deep journey. I mean, our intake calls must have been like, <laughs> the, it was like being on the podcast, but it was about every single thing in my life. Yeah. Um, you know, even taking pictures around my house, I thought was very fascinating. I was like, wait, you're right. I should look around my own house. Like mm -hmm. I've never even paid attention. I just know I like certain things. And then we started noticing, um, Lots of snakes, mm -hmm. like like the ones behind me, um, and plants. And yeah. I kept getting this vision of gold coming through. Um, back in 2019, I had this full weird activation that I now know to be Sekhmet, who is um, Egyptian goddess of kind of like the Kali, Egyptian Kali. But I didn't, I didn't even know who she was. She just kept coming to me, and I kept saying, I want this, like, gold powerful branding and I don't know what it looks like and I don't want it to be lame and cheesy and but it has to stand for me and like you said I wanted it to be taken seriously but I'm also a medicine person and it's kind of like how do you meet in the middle of business serious but like also like light and um on the spiritual path, like talking about this, my spirit and the medicine and soul and everything we bring into my work. So yeah, let's talk about your process. How'd you even come up with this? Because it, that was deep and intense. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed that. It was deep. It is deep. And um, I want to start, like, I've just, I feel really called to start by just sharing, um, when I was in art school, there was one thing one of my mentors said to me was always like, oh, you have to, have to, but like you wanna like put, put yourself in it, like whatever it is. And so that's kind of how I approach the branding, like not me, I put my clients in the work. So to do that, I need to, I need to learn about them, who they are and where they come from and their, what they've done in the past and how they got here. And, you know, I, I ask some like odd questions as well. Right. And, you know, and this is my process. Right. This is what helps me. And I'm not saying like, uh, you know, designers aren't going to do it the same way. Um, you know, I think I, I also working with you, I knew it was important that I asked like about your spirit animals and archetypes and I wanted to get that, you know, and this is the thing that's so important. It's like, I have to feel it. I have to embody it. And when I go into medicine space, I bring my clients with me when I'm working on someone specifically, like, and I, you know, there's, there's enough time for everything. So there's, you know, I find it really fun to, you know, and that's why the snake kept cut because I kept feeling it in the medicine space. I'm like, Beth is the space. The snake was just really important. It just because um, it kept I kept hearing it's like it's where you're going. It's where, you know, and, and so all of that, um, you know, it's it's like I wake up in the morning, I light a candle, and I, you know, you're you're on my altar. Like that's my process. You're on my altar. You're, you know, like I dream. Like my dreams are like vivid and crazy every night, and um, you know, it's like I, it's just embody it. I feel it, and I'm an empath. You know, for, but you know the good or bad part of you know it's not easy um I just like the it's the process of feeling and you know with my specifically my heightened sense perception like my strongest is feeling and so I feel I hear I see and you know that was like another part about wanting to create my own 
livelihood and work with the people that I wanted to work with was because I have all these gifts and they weren't being used, <laughs> you know, in corporate world. And it was bumming me out. <laughs> I'm just like, I have so much more to offer. And um, I just, you know, and this is, this is my process, you know, it's like embodying, feeling, seeing, smelling, like dreaming, going into medicine space, like um, writing. I do a lot of writing, like, I mean, you know, I, we, uh, we did a brand guide um, style booklet and everything from the discovery call is in that booklet. And every, you know, during the along the uh, journey of creating the brand, I went back to that information like constantly because I'm like, I just to, like, am I check? I have to check my, you know, does this make sense? Does this, you know, is this going to like, um, really say what what we want to say? You know, it's the the it, you know the visual interpretation, the branding is just as important as the words you write on your website. It's it's another way that people access who you are and what you're offering. And I mean, it, and I think that's just a, re it's really, I think it's really important. And clearly you think it's really important. And that's why it was, we were like a good match, right? Like we worked well together because we understood um, how important it is and the, and the purpose behind it. And, you know, I have to say, Beth, like, I really appreciate that, like, you pushed me, you know, like, you pushed me to, like, you know, do better. And, um, and I really, like, I'm really proud of what we created. Oh, my God. So good. And I, I know, I actually, um, what's interesting is during the intake of, you know, all those questions and looking around my land and my house and, you know, like the textiles, I think just because I've become so used to my living environment and even my, my life to stop and take a really deep look at like, what is the work I really do? What is it really like with my clients? What are, you know, like, yeah, it's like, I call myself a business coach, but here's what really goes on. And that process really helped me own a part of myself as well. It's kind of like you just said, I know I have these gifts. I don't advertise them. Like rarely to never do I talk about how intuitive I am because I'm the same way as you are. I I can't help it. It's always been like that even since I was young, like very young. I just get intuitive hits about people around me, friends, clients. And usually when I share them, they are – right meaning they always come true and sometimes i'll share them with people and they're like they they it's almost like i see it long before they see it in themselves mm -hmm. but you know every time i get some kind of like a dream or intuition or a vision about a client or just like something pops up i've now learned to trust it and i always share it with my clients and it, it's always on point like it yeah. always produces some major shift in them and so I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm actually using these gifts of mine that are like well beyond traditional what we would call business. And it's like the same thing you said. It's you could anybody could just bang out some generic graphic design. Right. But if it really emulates someone's um, soul, like what I could feel last night is that I felt for the first time ever, because I'll be honest, I well, Bina knows this. I had never really cared about my branding. Because I was always in just like growth, like get things out of there, let me grow, like, oh, this doesn't really matter, it does the job. But many years ago, I actually had a client say to me, <laughs> she's like, wow, your branding is so much cheesier than you are because you really do such deep work. And I know I do. It's like when I'm with clients, I do really deep work. But when you look at my website, it looks kind of just like, oh, it's like a generic website, whatever. Like it, it kind of doesn't really say who I am and in 2019 when I started having these visions come through me that's when I had a huge personal shift in my work it was right when I was about to come out of the psychedelic closet in public like in a bigger way and that's when I started getting these visions and these like very clear colors coming through and like 
um, like these Egyptian, you know, like, and it's weird because I had never really, I still haven't been to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Even this summer, I had a very clear download of a pyramid. I've always been highly connected to the sun. And voila, if you look at my new branding, it's all intertwined. And then the snake, um, it's funny, last night, and I think you've said this before, but I was like, why did this just take me this long to make sense out of it? You know, my podcast, Medicine for These Times, was also a download that came through. And I called it the psychedelic entrepreneur mostly because everyone said, well, the algorithms will think you're a, a medical podcast. So you have to have the word psychedelic in. So, mm -hmm. but now it's been two and a half years and I don't really care about algorithms. I care about being true to me. And I've always liked medicine for these times actually better than the psychedelic entrepreneur. So yesterday when I was working with these you know, like some of the images, I was like, oh, medicine. It's not just the snake as like ayahuasca is my main medicine and I think yours as well. And everybody knows it's a snake with ayahuasca. But it's like, I mean, look at the whole realm of medicine and the snake and what it's about and this yeah. intertwined um, relationship. And it's funny because you were the one that pointed out how snakes are everywhere in my life. And I've had a lot of really intense encounters with snakes that are mm -hmm. very significant i have um i have this one snake skin that's been sitting on my altar since a very pivotal point in my life in 2017 which i actually found literally the day of the eclipse in 2017 mm -hmm. while i was hiking by myself you know it's like you can't make this stuff up yeah. and now that i'm seeing all the branding together i'm like oh my god this is so me Mm -hmm. it's like the colors I love it's the gold that I imagined all the earth tones um you know it's showing this newer part of myself like in my power but also being a little more um in my feminine like the mm -hmm. subdued version when before I had these like kind of darker colors that I didn't really vibe with so I love that you take into account really all aspects of of who someone is like I've never thought about that and I love that because I actually always bring my clients into my space as well it's like I don't put pictures of them on my altar but they are on mm -hmm. my altar like every time I'm you know yeah. year round if I'm working with clients they're just they're in what I imagine is this like imaginary ceremony yeah Hey everyone, just a quick break to remind you that the True Path Entrepreneur Group Mastermind Program is open for enrollment now. We start at the beginning of 2024 in January, but we are starting to take applications now. If you'd like to learn more, you can check out the Mastermind webpage on my site at bethaweinstein.com slash mastermind. This is a 12-month group community-oriented mastermind program where you learn how to start, grow, and get clients in your business so that you can help more people, make a difference in the world, and do work that you absolutely love. This mastermind program is designed for new and early stage coaches, healers, psychedelic entrepreneurs, therapists, and anybody who wants to do transformational work in the world and wants to learn the exact steps you need to know to grow your business to the next level to be able to share your unique medicine and make a difference in the world. So again, that's bethaweinstein.com slash mastermind. The True Path Entrepreneur Group Business Coaching Mastermind Program is open now. So this has been a fascinating process to really witnessing what was coming through. And then here's my other question. So... Um, and I will share this with everyone. So Bina was showing me these incredible graphics and images from day one, like the first pass. And I was like excited by everything. I mean, to be honest, I would put any one of those things on my website today. And, you know, there were like hawks and feathers and mountains and just different, you know, like imageries. And somehow it was this process of narrowing and narrowing and narrowing and narrowing. And now I feel like, the, the shift that I could feel in my being was that now I actually embody like a whole brand. And I, I actually personally hate the word brand because I'm like, okay, I'm definitely more than a brand. But it's like standing for a movement. 
Mm-hmm. And I've always imagined standing for a movement, not just like being a coach and not just helping people, but like creating a bigger change on the planet. Like, you know, that's kind of what I'm all about, money or not. I want to see people change. Like I want to yeah. help people live the life of their dreams. Now, how how did you get from some of these like beautiful hawk imagery to this like really perfect but like simple – I don't know what we call it, an icon or the logo. Like, yeah. what is that process? Because that was hard for me where I was like, oh, my God, I love it all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, we, we started off with um, styles. Well, we started off with, like, me, like, Beth, can you send me pictures of your surroundings? <laughs> like, you know, I'm sure that was a little strange at first. But you, you know, you graciously uh, – listened and provided all this great material i mean you had great material to work with right so you're sending me all these photos and as you're sending me photos i'm like doing my own research you know you know what what does the snake mean what does sekma mean like you know reading about it and um you know it's it's a very intuitive process like it's just like um it's just like the, the you know the snake was it just kept coming back and and you know the logo the logos right so we've got we have two logos we have one for this and for these times and one for you so like what symbols we're distilling you know everything down to these symbols and they're so simple and yet they mean so much and you know with the color that was chosen and the gold and the shape, the shapes and the lines and the thickness of the line. And, um, my God, it, it's just like, it's a process of like me working and like distilling it down to, it's like, I'm trying to like articulate this. It's like, it's an edit, you know, it's like you edit and edit and edit and edit. And you just take, you just like, this is an, it's more like removing the things and like, yeah, the hawk is beautiful. And uh, there are so many beautiful elements that I'm just like, got it. Nope. It's just not it. It's just not it. And it's, it's, it's an intuitive process of like, st- you know, creating a mood board, creating a style scape, getting your input. I mean, there's a lot like in the beginning, it was a lot of like really just listening to like how you're reacting to, you know, reviewing the style scapes and, you know, like, you know, just having this, like, I just, you know, I'm not a huge talker, but I, I observe very deeply and I can tell like what let you, you know, like what inspired you, like how you reacted to it. Um, and, um, God, what are the process, you know, like it, it, it does go into like choosing the font you know also like choosing the font was a huge pro that took me like i was just like that's hard that was a hard one for that's sure hard. because you know we wanted it to we wanted a sans serif we knew we wanted it to be simple we wanted it to be professional and like there are lots of fonts out there mm-hmm. <laughs> um and then you know knowing that you wanted it to uh, the, it needed it for your website and for social media like it had to be a font that was like that had a that was a large family, so you could pick from the different weights, and you can mm. emphasize different things at different, you know, at, in different areas, and and some, you know, like one of the logo t- um, types like was thin because, and so it was like everything from like extra thin to bold, and we needed a, a robust family. I finally, found one that I was so so happy, and I. And I'm just like, no, I love that font. I'm like, I can't believe I didn't know that font before. And it's just amazing. Um, so crazy how, like, it, one word, like, written in 20 different fonts, they all have such – I mean, it probably also because we're both so empath- em- empathetic, right? Like, empath- is that the right word? Yeah, empath- We're both empaths. Like, anybody who feels. Like, I can read something and feel, like, a weird feeling. Right, right. And I could feel so much like meaning behind every little like slant in a font. Yeah, and it's really it's a hard thing. It's like oh my god, it's I hard. was super like impressed 
you definitely, I noticed you picked up, like when I went like literally one, you know, weight thinner and you're like, that's different. I'm like, how did you, I was like, how, did, wow, you know, like, oh my God. Yeah, it is different. And, and I used to get paid. To, I used to get paid in a, when I worked in the fashion industry and actually it's kind of like you said, it's like, um, being an empath is great. And there's times where I'm like, oh my God, I wish I didn't notice and feel so much. But in my old fashion career, I worked for one designer that was so detailed. It was like insane. Like she would notice the most insane things that no normal human being would ever mm. notice. So I, for years, was trained to notice every tiny little bit, mm -hmm. like smallest, like, you know, centimeter size details that no one, and, and this is a clothing brand, like I'm like, no one would ever notice, but to her, yeah, it was always, everything was so important, which made someone, you know, someone like her was a very good designer, but it yeah. kind of made me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that brings up like intention, you know, like every when I'm when I'm working, like everything is intentional. Every mark is intentional. Everything has meaning. And so it's important to um to to speak, you know, I think part of the brand style of guys like I wanted you to read and have this guide to go back to 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 really get a sense and a feeling feeling for her, like what this means you know because the more you are connected to the meaning the the deeper the connection and it's just it's going to it's going to emulate right like people will pick up on it people will be magnetized by it like that's how like right like hopefully yeah yeah i mean if you believe it Others will believe it, and yeah. I'm and I'm I'm so thrilled that you had this experience yesterday, mm. and because that's to me is that's it. It's that's exactly that's the gold right there. Well, this is what I was going to ask you about because it's interesting. I so most of my clients are either newer entrepreneurs, like totally new, or in the first few years, and I always tell them, look, like choose something that you can just do that's kind of low cost, but you know, kind of like the scrappy way, um, you know, to those of my clients that are maybe a little higher level or been in business a few years or could afford it. Then I say like, it's important to establish some kind of a branding. But now that I've just gone through this, I can, I know what the difference is. It's that embodiment of really like one of the first things I say to my clients, like literally week number one is to just own who you are like start the process of owning like okay you're starting a new coaching business okay call yourself a coach it's you know even if you've never had a client in your life you have to at least start that process of owning it like become it's like be do have you mm -hmm. have to become it first and i just realized like oh maybe i should tell my clients to go get a logo or a brand, something like even if it's just like one little thing to start that process of taking yourself seriously. Yeah. You know, like I did have someone do my branding before. It was just, you know, it was like my web designer who's decent, you know, but it was kind of like, ah, did the job. We didn't overthink it. It looked good enough, you know, but it never. Um, I think back then it was like, oh, this this is good enough to grow a business. And it was because my business grew. But it never really got me into the like my depth of my power and my authenticity, which is when, mm -hmm. what, five years, four years ago, I knew I needed to rebrand. Mm -hmm. I mean, four years ago is when I was really like, I'm ready to rebrand. And it took me four years to find the right person to do it. Yeah. Which says a lot. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And now I'm like, ooh. But I'm curious, what are your views on, like, how does a newer entrepreneur who maybe doesn't have – tons of money to invest but like wants something like do you think it's important for them to have some kind of a branding and if so what do you recommend for a new per a person who's not ready to like like maybe they don't even know what their business looks like yet yeah you know like what would you say to them i would um i would say that it is important to find something that you connect to something that has meaning for you and it doesn't have to be, you know, anything big, you know, like it, it doesn't have to, you can, you can go to Canva, right? Like Canva, right? 
you, it's like you can pick out colors say everything you know mm. colors um you could go on google and do a search for what the meaning of colors you can go on google go on pinterest and like look at there's so many visual things that you can see like what are you connected to like are, you know do are you like do you like nature like do you like animals um are you into archetypes like are you know what books do you read like you can pull information from there um you know i like to i have a section of my um discovery call which i called your i, I call it your essence and you know what is your essence like what makes you you unique like find that i start with i have a notebook i'm getting notebook i have notebooks everywhere but like i write lists of words i actually start with words mm. that's where i start like and then from there you know i distill it down to like well, what are the three words you know like what are you know and how does that how does that inform what i'm the imagery that i'm looking for yeah actually it's funny now that it um you mentioned the word thing i did that when i was launching my old running clothing business i i remember it must have been intuitive because i was never taught that but i was coming up with the name and that was a whole animal in itself and then it was kind of like okay i knew what this brand was about but how am I supposed to convey that, you know? So I made, I remember making this huge list of words and kind of like yanking out a few that stood that just kind of like were my guiding light for the brand. Mm -hmm. You know, like what I saw as the vision and kind of just built the whole brand around that. Um, the funny thing it was is I built it for a specific archetype of a person, like in a certain age group and a certain kind of lifestyle. And it ended up being... Um, which I realized was maybe an aspirational thing. It ended up being someone who is um, like 30 years older than that mm -hmm. <laughs> in a, a slightly different lifestyle, but, and it, they kept buying it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I designed the brand for this one kind of person and then it ended up being sold to this other kind of person, but somehow there was a connection there. Yeah. Which is like, that was a weird learning experience. But um, I do remember going through the, the words. So is that something you would suggest to maybe a newbie? Because like, I, I always tell people like, um, one of the very first exercises I have people do is this kind of like big, I call it the brain dump. And again, I learned this intuitively. And then I found out later other business coaches do this. But one of the, one of the question is um, write, I think it says like what are 20 words to describe your brand or like describe your business and they might say um you know like healing or integration or whatever it is but um and then i've never done anything with it though mm -hmm. like with them mm -hmm. so is that something you suggest is oh. maybe like brainstorm words and yeah absolutely um words you know feelings you know, a feeling has a, a, a certain um, experience to it, right? Like um, your temperament, you know, a temperament, like um, how something feels, like how would your business feel? Like if it were, if you were able to touch it, you know, like, mm. so I would, mm. you know, I like, I use all my senses and the more that I use all my senses, the deeper that I can go. So if I'm like, what does it smell like? What does it taste like? What is it, you know, like, what is it, what would it sound like? What would your business brand sound like? Cool. You know, like it, it can, and then, you know, maybe like if you have the word bold, like, well, what color goes with bold? You know, it could be, I mean, for, and it's different for everyone, right? Like bold could be red for someone, like bold could be, you know, yeah. Or it does, you know, it, but it's specific to you, right? So, mm. and, you know, working with, a, you know, the working with a designer, I think you know, if you find the right designer, they'll, they'll help you with this stuff. Yeah. You know, they'll help you get, like, boil it down to, like, what are, what are the absolute necessary um, things that I want to convey? Like, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's important. 
So interesting. Now, one thing that was coming up is that, you know, it's like if you want to do branding for a lot of coaches or healers or people in the psychedelic space, and I, I think this is one thing I said to you at the beginning, which I was like, well, so many of us think alike. Um, because we're on, you know, all humans are archetypes. We're on a similar path. We're into the same things. We've been to the same places. Um, and I, I think I said something about, well, I don't want the same sacred geometry that everybody else has, but, and especially in the coaching space, I mean, all of us have built sacred geometry into our logos because mm -hmm. we all love it. We all vibe with it. It stands for something. It has meaning. It's, you know, stands for the kind of world that we want to see. Um, so there's, you know, the sacred geometry, there's the animals, there's the earth, there's the, you know, there's a moon, there's the stars, there's the sun. I mean, to me, there's only so much you can really do at some point. But I'm wondering, um, you know, this was something I was always really concerned with is like, oh, I look too much like so-and-so or I don't want to be just like so-and-so. And of course, the more we were working on this, I came across like four or five other people that kind of looked similar and but they were in, you know, and they were kind of in the same like coaching or psychedelic space. And I'm like, oh, my God, what do I do? I want to be true to myself, but I want to stand out and be different. But then we are all kind of archetypes and working in kind of the similar, you know, we're in somewhat similar realm. You know, like I even I look at my friend Daniel Schenken, Tam Integration, you know, he has the Ouroboro, the, the snake as his logo. And I think it has like a little mountain. Um, he chose a certain color. But like, how do we how does how does like any coach or anyone in the psychedelic mm -hmm. space stand out yet be true to themselves like yeah. is this even possible or is this just the world we're in is li like kind of limited visually yeah i know i know right i think and that's why it's so important to um always go back to your like what is your essence and your brand story that's like every single every single line is intentional you know every single color is intentional like I told I know and you you mentioned this like several times and yeah. uh, from my perspective I was just like don't worry don't worry and of course how would you not worry right but I was like it's gonna we're gonna get there we're gonna get there we're gonna keep you know keep doing the edits keep deciding on the colors keep looking at the you know the weight and if you have if you hire someone to custom make a symbol for you it's like there is only that one like yes someone's using another snake but you know their snake is like has a different aesthetic to it and that says something different right so every that i don't think it's infinite it's like as infinite as like you know like the infinite like black void it's like where creation is you know where it, where there is source i don't think there i don't think there's a limit i think like i can make i can make a hundred snakes and they can all be different but because i'm like you know i'm this snake is for beth or and this snake is for you know that other person it's always going to be different i think you know that's my perspective on it Bina knows I have this deep fear of either, um, like, first it was like, oh, my God, and like, so true story. And I, maybe I'll send this to her. Um, I, we were already, like, 98% done. Like, I think you were just working on the final deliverables when I, um, I had interviewed my friend Laura Dawn and was like, I hadn't looked at her website in freaking years. Like, I just don't, I, I honestly, even friends of mine, I, like, never look at social media it's just I'm busy, right? So I don't really pay attention to a lot of other people. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, my God, she has a snake. And I got, like, really upset. And then, you know, it's kind of that same thing, like you said. It's like, well, what am I going to do? Change the entire thing now that we're 98% done? You know, it's one person. We're all different. And then I have this other fear of, like, oh, my God, now everybody's going to copy me. Um, and then – it's weird with this world that we're in of AI, this has come up so much because now I'm starting to notice more and more people using AI art in their 
whatever it is, their branding, their emails, their lead pages that they're, yeah, it's not really my style. I still don't like most of the aesthetic. Like I like, I've seen some, I guess, but you know, then there's AI. It's like, what kind of world are we going to get to? Is everybody going to look alike or is it going to be this kind of like, like you said, um, do you believe that we're just going to all start looking alike because of AI and then it's going to be like your AI versus my, my yeah. AI or what do you have you ever gotten any like concerns or downloads about where this is all going I, you know oddly I am not concerned I mean okay. it's like it's inevitable we can't stop it yeah. right so I'd rather um you know flow with it and I you know I just know I'm not really worried about the creative thing. Like someone's gonna um, hire me for me, yeah. and we're gonna create something. We're gonna collaborate, and there's only one me, and there's only one you, and it just the whole AI thing to me doesn't matter. I mean, I don't know what ten five years from now I might be saying something different, but at this moment I can't worry about it. That makes me feel a little relieved. Yeah, and I'm not worried. It's just, it's so strange sometimes because even though it is limitless, like there is infinite designs, there's infinite possibilities. And this is actually what I keep talking about is that yes, there's your branding, there's your writing, there's whatever you put out there. And in the end, it's gonna be more important than ever to just be fully in your essence, to be your true self out there in the world, to be, um, like fully you and I do believe as more and more people wake up and as the energy on the planet shifts there's more and more people that are going to be sensitive to your energy whether it's like looking at your AI art or your new logo or what it's like well what do you stand for what are you putting out there what are you um, actually doing in the world like how is your actual your heart and your energy and that's where I keep saying is like okay um, cause I bet, you know, I actually still haven't told Laura about my new artwork, but I'm like, I bet if I showed it to her, she could care less, you know, she'd be like, what? Cause she's the same way I am. Like, I don't really pay attention. And when occasionally I'll see, I, I mean, I've seen people blatantly copy, um, certain things I've done and I, you know, it's kind of like, it irks me for about two seconds and I'm like, eh, whatever, yeah. you know, it's like, because that person's energy and essence will attract in the right people for them. And yeah mine and it really doesn't matter if we do the exact like I literally had someone copy um one of my workshops and the emails and oh wow <laughs> like pretty much everything about it and I was like you know what it's this world we live in you know it's like there's a thousand I I actually have used this example for years there's bottled water companies yeah there's water that at least where I live there's a spring where you can get unlimited water for free from the earth and there is bottled water being sold for I don't know what people sell it for these days, $7 a bottle. And somehow when you go and the only time I buy a bottled water is at the airport, there's like, what, seven or eight different brands and there's still only one that I choose, mm -hmm. you know? And it's not the Jeebus one. I choose the one that tastes the best. Mm -hmm. um, it's just funny because it's come up so much with people like um, really being afraid of being copied and then the future of AI. But, you know, I'm curious, like, what are your views on how energy plays a part in all this like do you think about this a lot and is this something you've seen with your clients in the past oh yeah energy um energy says it all and whether you realize it or not and whether you're sensitive to it or not you still are um it it's just um you're gonna see it you're gonna be magnetized i mean we live you know what we live in a holographic world, you know, like we can only see what is part of us, right? So, you know, that is, um, we, we create our own space, we create our own world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be so important to remember as a, the, the, who knows what's going to happen in the future. Um, but speaking of the future, Bina, I want to hear 
what is it that you are up to over the next six to 12 months? Like, what is it you want to manifest and bring to life? Like, do you have any plans in your business? I'm curious, like, what is it you're oh, wow. putting out there? <laughs> um, well, I just started working on another project for a cannabis company. Uh, they're creating cool. a new brand and that's really exciting. So that's work stuff. Um, you know, I am just really pretty obsessed with my business and creating processes that are, this sounds really boring, but like creating processes that are really easy so I can, I can get all of the work aside so I can be present with my clients and have fun doing, you know, design projects and creating stories. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot of, uh, figuring out what those processes are. You know, it's been, uh, I've been doing this for full time for a year and a half. So it's time to like, it's, it's a constant tweaking, right? So I'm, I'm next leveling everything. Um, you know, I'm definitely my, my work, my, um, medicine work, the journeying is um, very important to me. Also, also, like breath work is a really, a really big part of how I that I do like on a weekly on the weekly. Um, I go in there specifically with questions about my business, and I come out with this action steps, like constantly, like and then, and so it's it's developing, you know this new way of working where I can create, I'm creating my, the way I want to work. And that's, that's what's really exciting me right now. And I don't, you know, no one else is, I don't have to fit into someone's box. Like, you know, I do, I think I, I see things very differently. I feel, um, I don't always fit into the nine to five. I never fit, fit into the nine to five world. It was, it was pretty painful. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, well, here I am, and I want to make life fun and joyful, and I want to connect, and so I'm, I'm really like developing, you know, this life that I being the architect of my own life. Like I'm just really working, working on that, and go on vacations. <laughs> that too. Yeah, that's what it's about. Yeah. I know. I look back at the nine to five. I still occasionally have nightmares. And it's it's so funny because it's like, wait, who decided that this is how it had to be done? Ugh. You know, yeah. like even I have certain meetings that I have to show up to in my business because I have people that come to a Monday morning meeting. But besides that, it's like, well, I'll work when it feels good to me. You know, I have client calls, but yeah, we get to create it. And um you know, who knows what can happen next. And I love that you're working for a cannabis company and there will probably be more psychedelic and other plant medicines and legal plant medicines and breathwork facilitators and coaches and healers that all need your help. And mm. I am so honored. I actually already am like, oh, I have a list of things I want to rehire you for. <laughs> awesome. Like, I'm like, oh, now that we have all this, I just need like this and this and this and this. But yeah. Yeah. One thing at a time. I am really happy and I'm so excited to um, unveil this to the world. I'm like, oh, gosh, this is going to be so long to explain. Um, maybe I'll do a solo episode explaining all the visions that I had mm. and how it came to this, you know, almost five years later. That <laughs> so. would I would really love that if you're know, very interested in hearing about it. But. And it's crazy because I'm finally um, I finally bought a whole book on segment and I'm actually in this like venus um underworld journey with this astrologer i follow that's like this whole i don't know i think it's like over a year because we follow venus's journey mm -hmm. into the underworld and sekhmet is a part of it and i'm like oh my god that's exactly i mean it's just all the synchronicities yeah. that add up over time that yeah. come to this this one point and where I am in my life today, after all these years of like major growth and transformation, it's like, oh, okay. Like, I feel like I've completed, I've, I've been saying to so many people, this year has been a very big year of like completing circles, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. kind of hitting to that, that point where the, the snake is finally reaching its tail mm -hmm. and then it's going to go around again. 
And um, it feels like such a really ripe and potent time to release this new branding to the world and also just kind of own who I truly am and not worry about algorithms or if yeah. this works or if it doesn't because all that's it that's it it's like the the truest of our authenticity is all it's about yeah and i think especially this crazy world we're entering into with you know who knows what's coming next and platforms and technology i don't think we can like run things based on algorithms anymore we have to run it based on our energy and our essence exactly yeah. like you say so yeah yeah, yeah. i am so honored to have worked with you oh, and to have you. had you here to bring on your your beautiful story and we'll share your website and your free gift and all your links in the show notes and um the only rule is you cannot copy my branding directly <laughs> right well awesome thank you so much beth this is fun oh. i thank you a lot um yeah and i look forward to seeing it out in the world i'm so excited i, I am too yeah and yes, everybody, I highly recommend Bina. Check her out and just, you know, tell her that you heard about her here on Medicine for These Times. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much, Bina. It was so good to have you here. Thank you, Beth. Bye.